Coming up on this edition of Able to Cook, the one and only program that focuses on cooking and people with special needs, and we focus on the ability of cooking, is the history of Chinese dynasties and food. All that and much more when Able to Cook starts right now. Hope you have an appetite. Stay tuned. Welcome to this edition of Able to Cook, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently abled in the kitchen, and we focus on abilities in the kitchen despite our challenges. Um, on this particular two-part episode, uh, we are talking about uh, the history of food and China. Um, so uh, let's begin. As you can see on your screen, uh, there is, um, um, as you can see on your screen, we have, uh, we have different um, uh, providences, uh, the Qidong, the um, Shayang, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, marked by uh, this map here. So let's um, go into that uh, as far as the classifications of history of Chinese, Chinese cuisine. The history of Chinese cuisine is marked by both variety and change. The archaeologist and scholar uh, Quan Chi Chang says that Chinese people, especially are preoccupied with food, and food is the center, or at least it accompanies and symbolizes many social interactions and classes. Over the course of history, he says, uh, continuing uh, continuity vastly overweighs change. He explains that the organizing principles, which date back to the earliest times, and the continuity of food tradition is principally known as a normal meal is made up of grains and other starches. Traditional uh, Chinese simplifies Chinese or pinyin and uh, fen and vegetable or meat dishes. Uh, the sinologist uh, Endyman Wilkinson uh, has highlighted the successions of uh, incremental and successive changes fu fundamentally altered the richness of changing Chinese cuisine. The expansion of Han culture, H-A-N, and the, and the upland stretches of the Yellow River across <clears throat> and expanded geographical uh, area with climate zone changes uh, and tropical subarctic um, each providing ingredients of indigenous cooking traditions an elaborate but um, continually developing traditional medicine which show food as the basis of good health food and medicine are medicine food uh, or medicine food is commonly known um, constantly shifting demands from elite beginnings of the imperial court and the provincial uh, governors, um, but eventually expanding to the rich landowners, um, scholar gourmands, and uh, so on and so forth for specialized cuisines. Um, However, far from home and continuous absorption of diverse foreign influences. Uh, Chinese cuisine, as we know it, has evolved gradually over the centuries as new food sources and techniques were introduced and discovered or invented. Although many of the characteristics as we know it, um, as we know it today, most of the food, uh, 
most are important have appeared in very early and did not appear because of the important until until late. The first chopsticks, uh, we can go into that. Chopsticks are shaped, as you can see, chopsticks are shaped into pairs, equally length sticks that have been used in kitchen and eating utensils in most East Asia uh, East Asia places over three millennium. Uh, there are uh, they are held in the dominant hand, secured by fingers, and wielded as extensions uh, of the hand to pick up the food. The okay, so uh, for instance, they were probably used in cooking, stirring. Um, Cooking, stirring, and um, stirring the fire as serving the food, and they were initially used as eating utensils. They began to take on the role during the Han, the Han Dynasty. So let's go to that. The Han Dynasty, um, traditional is traditional Chinese, simplified Chinese, um, was an imperial dynasty of China. 202 BC to 9 AD or, or 25 to 220 AD established by the Lu Bang and ruled the House of Lu. Uh, the dynasty was preceded by a short-lived uh, Qing dynasty or Qin dynasty 221 to 207 BC and a warring uh, inter intergenum uh, known as the Chu Han Contention, 206 to 202 BC, and it preceded by it was preceded by the Three Kingdoms period of the dynasty that was briefly interrupted by the Qing Dynasty, uh, nine to twenty three A.D. Uh, established by the usurping region of Wang Man, and thus separated into two periods, the Western Han and uh, the Eastern Han, uh, Han, H-A-N. Span <coughs> spanning over four centuries, the Han Dynasty is considered the golden age, the golden age of Chinese history, and is Influenced by the identity of Chinese civilization since modern China um, uh, as an ethnic group refers themselves as the Han people. The Han Chinese, the, the spoken syntax language or written Chinese is respectively and the Han language of the Han characters. Um, so let's go back to the Han Dynasty food. Um, oh, here we go. Okay. The history of the of Chinese um Let's go into the Han Dynasty here, if I can. Oh, okay. Um, so, the four schools refers to the Shandongs called the the former or or uh, politely known as Yang. So, Beijing cuisine is known as Imperial. Uh, so on and so forth. So there's a listing here and um, it goes according to the native people. Uh, legendary accounts of the introduction of agriculture of the Shannon credit, uh, credit the five grains. Um, Han culture from the upland stretches of the Yellow River. So uh, and it had to do with Japanese traders. However, a Chinese life um, glows, 
from a good feast. Chinese cuisine, uh, as we know, it evolved gradually over time. And uh, not long after the, the expansion of the Chinese Empire during the Qing di Dynasty, Han writers <clears throat> noted the great differences between culinary practices among the different parts of their realm. These differences followed to a um, great extent of the varying climates and availabilities of foodstuff in China. Many writers tried their hands at classification, but um, internal politic boundaries over the centuries did not coincide uh, shifting culture identities. There was no way to establish clear-cut enduring classifications or ranking of food and cooking styles. Different ethnic groups might occupy small areas, but if cuisines were included in the, in the systematic list uh, from early on, certain broad characterizations, characterizations are useful. Uh, however, um, so now the um, primary and earliest distinction between the earliest uh, settled uh, uh, relatively the North China Plain and the Yangtze, um, uh, which is basically noodles and dumplings. So Chinese noodles are... <clears throat> The noodle itself uh, is a type of food from unleavened dough, and as you can see here, there is a picture. Um, there's a picture of a gentleman who is a chef that's making Chinese noodles. And again, Chinese noodles here with chopsticks. Pictures of different noodles. The, the lancet, um, and it goes according, like, um, spaghetti and thin noodles for uh, stir-frying. And here you can see uh, a chart of what the noodle is and what it looks like um, in different categories. This is the the Asian noodle or Indian, sorry, Indian rice noodles. And, and you can see somebody stir frying and making things here. Different types of noodles. Uh, there's in Southeast Asia. And this is a wok, and they're stir-frying. So, uh, as you can see, there. Okay, hold on. So let's go into also uh, what a wok is. Let's define what a wok is. If I could... Um... um show you, <clears throat> I don't want to put a, okay, so definition of a wok is, according to Miriam, Miriam Web, Webster, okay, so a wok is a large uh, shaped cooking utensil usually used in stir-frying. Uh, examples on, on the web is um, got to put your wok to medium-high heat and a small, of neutral, small amount of neutral cooking oil. Um, so let me, do, let me do, put a picture of a wok.
Okay. I don't want to use Amazon examples. But. See, um, it's the shaped bowl, and you basically uh, stir frying something. That's what uh, a wok is. So there's, there's some images of food in a wok. It's usually made from carbon steel. And um, you have to be careful how to clean a wok. So it, whoops. So that's what a wok looks like. And um, so um, basically, um, there's a base at the bottom, and it, it depends how hot it becomes uh, to make food. So um, that's what a wok is. Oh, okay. Uh, so let's go into uh, other dynasties. Oh, wait. Oops. Other dynasty food. Oh, that's, oops, no, okay, hold on, uh, so there's different dynasties here, uh, of the different Chinese dynasties, let's go to this website, it's much, um, better, so, um, there's a famous saying that China has people regard their food as prime necessity. Uh, indeed, food is a part of Chinese culture. Let's take a look through time. Uh, there's um, foods of the Shang Dynasty, 1600 BC to 1046 BC. Uh, China's first recorded um, history began with the Shang Dynasty uh, back then. People used uh, heat and fire to heat their food, and you can tell by signs of fire and smoke on the uh, cooking utensils found in the Yin ruins. Um, food was divided into two groups: grain and grain, grain and food dishes. Uh, the most common was grain and millet. The glutinous millet was more expensive than non-glutinous um, because of the glutinous millet and what was used to make alcohol and people of the Shang dynasty had a repetition for their alcoholic indulgence for dishes of meat uh, meat dishes were soups that were popular people hunted in big groups and particularly ate everything uh, Everything they got their hands on. Um, uh, basically, uh, elephants, rhinoceros, rabbits, uh, deer, fish, deer, fish, and tortoises, etc. And not only consumed the meat, but uh, carved <clears throat> the famous oracle bone script and those bones and shells of the prey. Um, uh, facts about the Zhao Dynasty, and as you can see by a picture here, 1046 BC to 256 BC. Um, the Zhao Dynasty was a period of food culture that started to form and develop according to the rites of Zhao. Uh, there were 3,983 uh, 3, officials who were in charge of the royal household. Among them, 1,683 were on food and drink related uh, positions and 
how you can tell how much people value their food over time. Uh, one last thing before we end this part of the show. Uh, an interesting phenomenon was during the Zhao Dynasty because daily life and um, and architectural, I mean, um, um, agricultural activities of food were closely related um, to the rites as well. People presented food as a medium between heaven and earth. Depending on the significance of the rites, different kinds of food were put into different amounts, and ancient cooking vessels called ancient cooking vessels called ding. Um, if a if a rite was held, R I T E, of the emperor, uh, then. Then there must be nine vessels filled with beef, beef, lamb, pork, pork, sorry, beef, lamb, pork, fish, and dried meat intestines. Fresh fish, fresh fish and dried meat, fresh fish and dried meat, uh, if, if the right R-I-T-E was held by normal scholars, then, uh, there would, um, be only one vessel filled with pork alone. Um, and by the way, this puts an end to the first part of Able to Cook, where we talked about the uh, dynasties of China and the food regions. Uh, please tune in to part two of Able to Cook. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. If you want to find out more about Able to Cook, you can go to www.orcamedia.net. That's www.orcamedia.net. Able to Cook is the only program that focuses on cooking and not being afraid of the kitchen. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time.